Aloha mai kako, I'm Vicky Hoke Takamine, and I'm here with Joey Palupe, who I know as a Kalo man. Well, I just <laughs> made you a Kalo man, Joey. All right, mahalo, Auntie. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we? Um, today we're at Kulo Ranch, but specifically we're in the Ahupua of Hakipu'u. Um, just wanted to point out some of the landmarks that kind of give us good indication of where we are. Uh, we got Kaneholani on the right. This, this peak here kind of separates the division between Kuolo and Hakipu'u. Up in the back, we have Pu'u Ohulehule. Hule. Um, that is our highest point in Hakipu'u. Looping back down, we got the ridge that swings down to Pu'u Pu'el um, and separates Waikane from Hakipu'u. Um, the aina that we stand on here with the lo'i um, is Pahalona. So Pahalona was a ohana aina back in the day, prominently known for farming kalo, and you know we're glad to say that we can still do that today. But yeah, aloha. When, when we talk about ahupua'a, so a lot of people understand, we, we have an opportunity to educate people about what aina, what, what island are we on in the state of Hawaii, well, in Hawaii Island, yeah. in the archipelago. Yeah, so um, zooming out of the map, Hakipu'u yeah. is in Ko'olaupoko, which is a region or a moku on the island of Oahu. Perfect. And then we also have other kinds of divisions um, within that ahupua or within the moku. So the moku is the island, right? Yeah. And then, we got uh, but moku, also moku is moku also is a district, district yes. right? And then we can further divide that by um, the, these pie shaped, what I've, yeah. They are pie shaped districts that are formed with the ridges yeah. on the Mauna that go from mountain to the ocean. Yeah, Pololi. So that, that concept of Ahupua for us on Oahu Island, we're really, really fortunate because our ridge lines stretch from the mountain to the sea and the water runs in that way. Now, if you go to other islands, you might not see it be Mauka to Makai and run divided by the ridge lines. It might be you know, the center of the island or whatever it may be. But it's really a way for us to kind of manage our people within that region based on how much Hawaii we have there, how much Hawaii can provide the amount of life there. Yeah, so Hawaii meaning water yeah. and the natural and the cultural resources that are vital to our survival as a people. So when we talk about, um, you know, any kinds of uh, community or peoples, they're usually, uh, de determined by their cultural resources, their cultural practices. Yeah. So, and then I, I think for me, it's important that we understand who Native Hawaiians are by the aina, that, the land yeah. that we live on, and the natural and the cultural resources that, that we need are, are really critical for our survival and our people and our arts and culture. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And when we think about cultural identity, in Hawaii specifically, uh, we ground ourselves and pride ourselves with people of this place, people of this aina, stretching back to that mo'oko'o, how that genealogy of our people, starting with Papa and Wakea and going back into the story of Halo, um, and that connection between aina and kanaka land and people was a familial connection. So for us to perpetuate a, a practice like um, farming kalo, it's not just important to feed the people, but it helps us in our cultural identity and strengthening that and that pilina to aina. All those things are kind of worked within that, that practice and that tradition, which is why we kind of farm it in the same traditional way that, that our kupuna did back then. So when we look at our aina, this land, this, these are all spring water? Yeah, so in Hakipu, we have a pretty interesting watershed. We get, you know, top rain, we, get, we have rivers and all that kind of stuff, but our mud is very, very, um, hollow per se, it kind of seeps down and then it finds the lowest spot in the Aupua and then it, it pukas and it springs out. So we have some small puna away that kind of trickle out here and there and then all of those different puna come down the valley and form into larger kawaii. And this is kind of an example of that, that system of water gathering in the low portion of Hakipu'u right before it exits out into the kai. Um, but what is genius about this this way of managing our way is this prevents our reef from flooding. This prevents that large amount of algal bloom that might happen that smothers the reef and the, and the fish there. And um, for us, you know, as Hawaiians, we were very in tune with the after effects of what we do. 
right? So we, we're very Akamai in thinking that everything has a consequence, whether that's good or bad. So we try to eliminate all consequences that are negative before we take a step and actually create something like this. Um, so when we did create something and it worked so well, it was permanent because it, it was beneficial to the entire system, the entire ahupua'a, all of the different kinolo can grow. Um, and from there, you know, we can, we can internally grow as well as kanaka. Well, that's where we get the word kanawai. Yeah? Yeah. So vai meaning water right. and kanawai meaning law. Yeah. So the law of the water is what happens up Malka in the mountains, right? Yeah. If you divert the water to feed your taro patches, right. you have to bring it back to its point source. Exactly. And it has to be the amount of water that is brought back is the same amount that you take out. So you take out 50 gallons, you got to bring back 50 yeah. gallons. And it has to be clean right. in the same way that you extracted it. Yeah. If not so, better, right? If not better. Yeah. So what, what we were struggling with for a while is that people were taking water and not restoring it to the, yeah. to the, um, to the stream so that the people below them would not have yeah. the water and our, our taro patches dried up. Yeah. So I know for years we had to struggle with, um, you know, colonization and different lawmakers not understanding that because they were sucking the water out over to, for the sugar plantations mm -hmm. on the other side of the island. We're on the windward, what is called the windward side of the island, yeah? yeah? So the Ko'olau side. Mm -hmm. And that's the wet side of the island. So this is this was our farm. Yeah. The entire Ahupua, the entire west side, the, the um, corner side of the island is where all of our farming happens. Yeah. And then the dry side is on the other side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's a, the Kona side. Yeah. And that, ha that is in all of our islands in the entire archipelago right. of Hawaiian island chain. So we know that the farming side and the, the places that we have to keep our water flowing so that we can feed our families is all on the west, uh, um, on, this on, the side of, side, on the yeah. east side of the island, right? Totally. So, because yeah. the, the mountains are so high, it catches those clouds and then the clouds condense over right. the mountain peaks and then it flows down yeah. the mist and the water so our streams come out this way and feed our farms. And I think it's really important for us to kind of acknowledge, you know, looking at the names of these cardinal directions and the placement of our aina and where our resources are allocated for certain things. Um, when it came to food production and agriculture and those types of things, a lot of those traditions came with us from Kahiki. And when you look back in the, the different places in the Pacific and Kahiki, you have places like Ko'olau would translate to Tokerau. You have places like Kona would be like Tonga, um, and, and so on and so forth. And, and therefore, it kind of carries the characteristics of those places. And then when our people come to these, uh, these new islands, have it be Hawaii or modern day Hawaii as we know it, they're gonna set up camp in a way that uh, makes sense to them and what they know. So that ancestral knowledge traveled with us from way before so by the time they come to Hawaii, we're already Akamai, right? We didn't have to start from ground zero. We're coming with ancestral knowledge way beyond the, the Po'e of Hawaii. Um, and from there we grow, yeah. right? So we're that elevated um, consciousness and understanding of how to manage our resources, manage ourselves, so we can be beneficial to the Aina too. Well, they yeah. totally had to be in con con connection with their Aina because they understood star navigation. Yeah. We, we didn't have maps and uh, so they, they understood the winds, the waves, the currents, the birds uh, in order to get them to Hawaii. Right. So our, the first migration came from our cases and then yeah. and then from the, you know, Tahitian, yeah. Tahitian from navigators. Forward, yeah. yeah, so, so we, we were navigated thousands of miles over the ocean to get here. And once mm -hmm. they got here, they saw the wealth of the islands, yeah. the richness of this place, the uh, um, streams, the natural surroundings that were vital to our survival as a people. Yeah. Um, and that's the migration story. Mm -hmm. But we also have the story, and you mentioned this earlier about Papa and Wakea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think the, the beautiful thing about Papa and Wakea and that genealogical mo'olelo that we have to tell us who we are um, is it can be seen in so many different ways and interpreted in so many different lenses that that we as a people will always have a way to, to connect to this mo'olelo um, no matter what the time is, no matter what we're presented with, what the world might be like, we can always root back in and connect to that mo'olelo. Papa being Earth Mother, 
um, and Wakel being Sky Father, it was a union between those two that birthed Ho'ohoku Kalani, the woman of the stars. And from, from there, Ho'ohoku Kalani and Wakel, Sky Father and the, the stars, had a union together and made Haloa Nakalao Kapalili, which is uh, our first kalo plant. Um, and there's different versions of this mo'olelo that take us geographically to different places in Hawaii. The one that I want to kind of talk about and, and really pay homage to today is, is the one that happened specifically in Kualoa and Akipu'u. Um, when we look at some of the place names around where we are situation, situated today, we have Mokapu, short for Moku, Moku Kapu Wakea, you know, that, that ancestral birthland and that homeland to Wakea. And then we have Kaneholani up there. It's another that's another um, Kane entity or a name that kind of has some Pilina to Wakea as a son. Um, but also Kane, the god of water, fresh water, water. creativity. Yeah. Right? So Kane Hualani. Yeah. And, and just below Kane Hualani, we have these Pali that come down. Uh -huh. And at the tree line there, which is kind of covered by this hau bush, but tree line where it meets the cliff, we call it Mo'okapu Haloa. And that's that sacred ancestor of Halo, and that was said to be, for us Oahu people, the first place that Kalo was planted. Um, another very abundant food for us as people was, was our ulu. And mm. the Ka'ulu Akahai is a mo'olelo that brings us again back to Hakipu'u and the first um, planted ulu tree on Oahu being in Hakipu'u with Kahai. So all of these different migrational versions of this mo'olelo, they all tie in in different ways um, and, and gives us this opportunity to look back into the past and understand that, you know, this was a food hub. Yeah. This And it still yeah. is today. Yeah. So we're here with, um, so I always refer to you as a Kahlo man because every time I see you, I said, I think of Kahlo. I was like, <laughs> oh, I should ask him for some Kahlo and Pa'iai. But um, tell me, so tell me about your, the, this is called the Lo'i. Yeah. So this is our Lo'i Kahlo. Um, in Hakipu'u at Pahalona, we, we kind of do things a little bit different from what you might traditionally see in, in other places of Hawaii, and all of this is trial and error, right? The practice of farming kalo, there's not one way to do a loi, right? The, the most important thing is the vai comes in and the vai goes out, and that's that's the main way, you know? Uh, for us, we do it in mo'o mounds, which are these long rows of kalo, and this thought of packing our ohanas together with lots of mud surrounding them gives them a little bit of a chance um, to kind of mediate the difference between the temperature change here in water. So you, when you think about an ohana, and we think about stability in the hale, right? Even as people, if the stability in the hale is not very good and you're going up and down, up and down every time, that keiki is not gonna grow up very strong, right? So we take those life lessons, apply it to the way that we farm, and we try to give them the best chance at making a strong kalo. You know, yeah. we treat so, it as if it is ours. So, Haloa. Haloa Nakalau Kapalili. Right. Yeah. And then we mentioned these terms, the oha. Yeah. That is also the root word for ohana, yeah. which meaning family, because from that main corm, the oha, come all the little keiki, the children, yeah. Yeah. right? The, the, the keiki that come out, off extend the makua. off the makua, the parents. Yeah. So all of these terms are terms of Olelo Hawaii that relate to our family. Yes. And our pilina, our, our, our closeness or the relationships. Yeah. That family the, dynamic is, right. is again reflected in the growth of our kalo, our eldest, oh, our eldest ohan, our eldest brother. Um, and the, the beautiful thing about halo is, it, you know, when you're, whatever you're feeling, I always tell people, you know, if you're feeling a certain way and you're having family problems, get in the loi, you know, and, and just be there and listen. And when you get your hands in the mud and you're helping the ohana that, that's always been there for you, it's one of those things that you start to really internalize and understand what you need to make your ohana better, right? Because this is your older brother. Sometimes we just gotta reconnect and listen, right? And then our family can be good again, healthy. But when we step away from that, we forget who we are, we forget where we come from. Oh, pilikia and hale. Yeah. You know? Easy for make mistake, easy for forget the priorities of the family and what right. we need to do as a, as a ohana to move forward. I love this because we can look at Wakea, Sky Father. Yeah. 
Yeah, Papahanao Moku, the yeah. woman that gives birth to all of the islands, yeah. to the islands, Ho'ohoku Kalani, her firstborn. Yeah. And uh, the firstborn of Ho'ohoku Kalani and Wakea is Haloa. Haloa. Haloa yeah. Lau Kapalili, and, right? And so just after Haloa is born, um, the second first born, there's a first second man who's named after man. his older brother Haloa. Haloa. And, and then that. that sets up the relationship for all of us as Hawaiians. We descend from the genealogy is that we descend from Haloa. Yeah. And our, our kuleana then is to take care of the older sibling, yeah. and the older sibling is taking care of taking us. care yeah. of the the kalo, taking care of the lands. So when we say malama aina, yeah. that means to take care of the land yeah. and take care of the land that feeds us aina. So if we don't take care of our land, we don't care take care of the aina. We're not going to have food to sustain our families, our oha, our ohana, our haloa. Yeah. Lal Kapalili and our Kalo. Yeah, and all of that comes back full circle and it comes to, again, feeding ourselves as physical entities, but also that cultural identity. What are we feeding the Na'au of our people? Are we feeding them the tools they need to be strong culturally and have that grounding and, and have a solid identity, right? Because if we know that we're pa'a as a Kanaka, the decisions we make moving forward will have more confidence. Um, people will look up to us a little bit more. And it helps us to just gain um, better understanding of where we're at and our kuleana to it. Yeah. yeah. So here at Kualoa, and we're here at Kualoa, not that I'm wanting to plug Kualoa, but <laughs> I think you have an educational program, which is why you're here. Aye, aye. So what do you, what do, you do here at Kualoa? So I'm, I'm the manager of Hawaiian Culture, um, Community Engagement and Education. And basically, it's a long title for, you know, being committed to whatever the future gets out of this, right? Um, for us, we're shifting into this new narrative of getting people back in Aloi, getting our, our Hawaiians in the Aina. Um, for a long time, Kulo was inaccessible to many people to do stuff like this. Um, but for us, it, we've taken it on as our Kuleana to reinstitute Kanaka into this Aina, give them that connection that they might need, you know, build that cultural connectedness to the Aina, um, to themselves, to their Kupuna. And then from there, you know, expand, move out, um, and maybe even help visitors, right? And in all of this, we're hoping that our aina gets revalidated as a source. Our aina gets respected and, and protected, you know, until the end of time. Because if we don't value those things in our aina and the ability it has to grow food and provide for our community, things, things will be taken for granted and things might go the wrong way. Right? So we, we got to be that kupa'a, we got to be that strong force that puts the things that are important forward and accessible to the Aina and to the people, right? So we can go to Kualoa Ranch org or yeah. we have a website that we can call and sign up our ohana, our family. Yeah. And so then, oh, look at the alai ula, the red. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. the other thing about this too is we've got a rice paddy over here, but it's bringing back the birds, the native birds. Yeah. Oh. What we got flying up oh, ahead. <laughs> we got some ducks over here. We got some ducks, but yeah. did I see also the kolea? There's kolea. Kolea. Kolea frequent here. Aoku'u. Alai ula. Alai ke keo. So ai o. Yeah. Our native birds are, are coming back to our lands. and. Those are know. the original kupa of this place. Right, you know? these, right. these people were waiting for this to happen so they can come home and be healthy again. Yeah. And we've seen population increase, which is super good indication that we're doing something good yeah. um, so we're happy with that and if you guys ever want to come out you know it, the best thing to do i would say if you're coming in an educational setting which i think most of us are um, you can email education at kualoa.com with any increase to come by you can malama aina get you in aloe you can do some stream restoration or just come and relax and learn a little bit about this place and the ahupua'a system and what we do yeah, there's something for everybody here yeah. at Kualoa, and thank you so much for hosting Mahalo, us auntie. and Mahalo. talking story about our aina and our ahupua'a and where moku yeah. is. Beautiful. Mahalo. Mahalo. Yeah, we can walk down towards the ocean and... <laughs>